Okay, so in this exercise, you're going to be practicing some programming, and that is kind of important to how Bro works, so that's why you're doing it. Um, I think it's kind of, it's designed in a way that it's helpful if you've at least used another programming language before, um, but it does kind of give you a lot up front. So even if you haven't learned a programming language, you might find some use for this uh, if you just follow along. Um, I don't really intend to stand up here and go through it. Um, you guys all have this. You can work at your own pace if you want. So um, go for it. And if you have any questions, if you get stuck, you know, raise your hand and try to flag somebody down, and they could come help you. Uh, sure, yeah, I can review solutions at the end. All right, so hopefully the language hasn't been too painful for you guys. Um, we're going to try to go through some solutions. Okay, so I guess this is the first exercise that it asks you just to write a program to remove every letter E from an arbitrary string of your choosing. Um, so I think the one of the simplest ways was um, it already introduced how to loop over a string. So you could just choose a string called testing, and then you write a loop, and you have a condition that checks if the current letter you're on is E. And if it is, then you don't do anything. But if it's not, then you just append to the, this uh, result that you're, this ongoing result variable. So that's how you do that. Is there any questions on that? Pretty easy. Uh, this is the next exercise. It uh, wants you to do a similar thing, but now you're just counting vowels in some string that you choose. And it had just introduced the switch statement, so a really easy way to do that is you just have a case, a case label that has um, each of the vowels on it, and if uh, the current letter that you're on matches, then you just increment this result variable. Again, pretty straightforward. So then another exercise kind of builds on that and as you do it, instead of using a switch statement, use uh, pattern matching to do it. Um, so the logic looks a lot similar to what you just saw, except you now have this pattern to replace that case label of the switch statement. And so that just matches on vowels for the the current character of the loop, and if it matches, uh, increments the results. So um, those are all kind of simple examples. That's getting a little bit more tricky, and but still not kind of asking you to do anything useful right now. But um, uh, this exercise was uh, asking you to kind of replicate uh, how to solve a, a typical like job interview question, which is the fizz buzz. And you, what that asks you to do is um, you know, basically iterate from 1 to 100. And for multiples of 3, you print fuzz instead of a number. And for multiples of 5, you print buzz. And then if it's, divisible by, if it, if it's a multiple of both, then you print fizz buzz. Else, you just print the number. Um, so the tricky part about this was kind of um, figuring out how to loop over 1 to 100. And it's kind of a good demonstration, I think, of something that you, you may encounter that's a limitation of the language. Um, uh, Bro doesn't have, uh, it, it has a range-based for loop. You can't just um, iterate over arbitrary ranges that you pick. Um, so you kind of need to get creative in how you choose to do this iteration. Um, and I guess just to say kind of what the reason for that is, is because you don't want, or I guess it was not intended, we didn't want people to be writing loops that take too long because you can easily get yourself into a situation where you spend too much time just looping over something and you end up dropping packets or some such thing that's undesirable. So. Um, but you still may have legitimate uses for doing kinds of arbitrary looping, so uh, you might need to, to do one of these kind of workarounds. 
and it might be fine for your, your use case. Um, so the solution here, there's, a, there's multiple ways to do this. Um, the solution here uh, uses a function recursion. So it has this function here called fizzbuzz, and it takes as a parameter a count. And so here is the check for fizz if it's, if module three equals zero, you will add fizz to the string. If it's module five is zero, then you also add buzz. Um, and then you can tell um, if none of those match, then you're just going to be printing the integer, else you're going to be printing you know, either fizz or buzz or fizz buzz. Um, and that's kind of takes care of the main program logic. And now um, the thing is how do you move on to the next integer? And all you have to do, it, yeah, I mean, you've already defined the function that you want, so you just call it again as long as you're below 100 with the next integer. So then a follow-up to that was just do it again, because I'm kind of, oh, is there a question? Um, so you can, um, if you, so are you saying, you're asking if you want to co convert the integer to a string? Yeah. Uh, one way that you can kind of do that is um, the format function fmt. Um, you can kind of give that basically any bro value and it knows how to convert it to a string. So that would be one way. Um, yeah, so the, the next one was just kind of saying do it again and then do it a different way because I'm kind of lazy. But, you know, you have to do that a lot just to, you know, get practice and to evaluate whether it's better or not. Um, and so a different way to do the same thing would be you're still looping, but now you have a lookup table. Um, I'd actually say that's, that's kind of a better approach. Um, so now you don't really have a problem of, you know, somebody saying recurse on this, you know, thousands of times and then blowing out your stack, but now you just have a one function that has a lookup table. Um, that it, that, so here's the, here's the same fizzbuzz function, takes an integer. Um, and then it does the, the modulo, it's 15 this time because we can, you know, basically uh, enumerate all the different possibilities that can come out of this fizzbuzz function in this table, and then just look up what it's, what it's supposed to print out, and that's what it does here. Um, if it's not in the table, then that just means it, it's, it, it's not supposed to print one of these strings, it's, it's printing out the integer, so that's the if condition there. And the way it approached iteration this time was it just, it made a vector of 10 elements and then just used two loops to, two for loops to iterate over that twice. So um, it's a nested for loop, so 10 times 10 is 100. So yet another way would be, um, Instead of using a recursive function, you kind of conceptually use a recursive event. Um, so this is also kind of better than a function because you also then end up with the, uh, uh, because now instead of actually, you know, having a call stack for each function that you're calling, you, you'd be creating a new event and then whenever bro has a chance to run that, it would do so, and 
that doesn't have as much problems as the uh, recursive function based approach. Um, okay. So this was kind of the last segment of the exercise, which is kind of asking you to do something that may be interesting or useful. Um, and that was just to do, to try to write some uh, Bro module that's, you know, you might actually end up using or sharing with other people that would uh, attempt to do some type of uh, frequency analysis statistics tracking. And what it meant by that was just, you know, tracking how frequent certain characters or bytes show up in arbitrary input texts. I don't know if I actually want to get into that too much. It's, we're, we're yeah, um, is, if there's questions, then maybe I'll go with the approach of, you know, just ask them and we can talk about it, but um, yeah. It's a lot easier to look at the code rather than just talk about the code to you guys. It's, <laughs> I don't know, so that might be better if you could just look at the solutions. Um, I think that's it. Was there any other higher level questions? That's kind of not a question for me. Is, I don't know. I, I, because I got questions from people that didn't actually know how to run these in Pro. Uh, so I actually just wanted to run it in uh, Pro uh, scripting. Oh, right. Yeah. So we're just kind of adding the hash pound at the top. OK. Yeah. Yeah. There's a new language feature that I thought might be interesting <laughs> to add to the list of other ones we have already. Yeah, you can do hooks. Yeah, it's um, basically you, you, he was asking, um, um, or not asking, but he's just observing that you need to have functions be declared before you actually use them. Um, or even if you, use, if you call the function, if you just declare the function after, you, after other code and then call it after you've declared it, you still get like a syntax error. So like if I, so like I had one big row script Yeah, it's. Okay, thanks. Thank you, John.